everyone, this is Harley from Garden FL and welcome to episode 18 of the Tropical Fruit Gardening TV series. And in today's episode, I'm actually gonna be working from my house, from my garden in Bradenton, Florida because I have quite a lot of things to catch up. There are some fruit trees and some plants that I really just wanna plant here. You know, I've been so busy at the farm that uh, I kind of just miss, you know, being here, being in my, uh, you know, where it all started. This is where I got all my inspiration from. This is where I got, uh, you know, this is kind of my sandbox. So it is important to every once in a while go back and, uh, you know, check on the fruits because these fruits, you need to nurse them all the way to maturity. So yeah, let's take care of the garden. So these tropical plants really love to get wet. As they just love this rainwater. And this has actually come from the well. So um, it extracts the water from down below in, in Florida. So it's not the typical hose water. And this is my Relinia right here. It's doing beautifully. It's almost tripled in size since I put it in the ground. But um, we're in the month of October, almost November. So pretty soon these anonas are gonna start losing their leaves because uh, you know that's when they go dormant. And the tree, all known as pretty much go dormant at one point. You know, they drop all their leaves. So. This is actually a neem tree. Now, I really love this neem tree because look at this new growth. And if you guys don't know, neem tree is basically, is really beneficial to your uh, food forest. Now what neem does is basically it repels all insects and uh, also, it's very medicinal to the body to eat the leaves. You can cook with the leaves, with the bark. Every piece of the neem, the seeds as well, is uh, are very beneficial. To make neem oil, actually, you know, the neem oil that you rub on your trees to get uh, aphids off and everything. To extract that from this, typically people would use the seeds and they would cold press it, I believe, is how they get the oil out. So I can't wait for this to grow. As you see, look at this new growth. It's already growing very well. I really love this neem tree. As you see, it's very young. This was air layered, but it's just pushing out really good, strong growth. Really beautiful tree, look at that. The neem. And like I said, I recommend this for every food forest. It's just a really beneficial tree overall. Now, the nice part about being able to water everything is, you know, I have the convenience of having, I'm lucky to have the hose, but unlike my farm, you know, I don't have uh, electricity, so I can't really plug in a hose like this. But it's all cool because I really like, uh, I like doing it the natural way and the easy way too, because you can, here I can learn, you know, and experiment much easier. But also too, the rainy season in Florida is basically over meaning that I need to start watering, which is fine because... But one thing is the anonas, the sugar apples, they'll actually go dormant, so it's not really recommended to even water the sugar apples, uh, you know, daily, like I was doing before when they were in season. So for the sugar apples, I might water them like twice a week or, or once every week, depending on, you know, what I think is best. But I still have a ton of flowers and, you know, other things like papayas, bananas that need water, you know, all year round, so... As you see right here, it's a better luck inside the bananas forming. Now I'm so excited because we're gonna see how they form. But one of my friends, actually Dylan told me from Dylan Hart, he told me that told me that this looks like a disease that a banana has. So I'm gonna look more into it because it is a little strange how the bananas bunch right here. I believe there's something about bunching. So we'll look more into that. Um, also, I have an issue with my bananas right now because they have some like white fly or something like that. As you see right here is some pest problem. So I really, I'm going to take care of this and uh, it could be affecting this banana possibly. So I want to take care of that ASAP. These little flowers are so pretty. They make a perfect addition to your yard and they also attract a lot of pollinators. Look at that. Beautiful. And the leaves come in different various textures. As you see, this one's a very brittle almost variegated pink texture i really love how this looks with the sun and you see over here i believe this is another variety of begonia very pretty so this is actually the chinese lantern these flowers are actually edible believe it or not it tastes very sweet 
and they actually have a nectar that ants are always trying to get to this one this one i don't really want to harvest right now because this tree almost died way back and it's doing very well after we saved a little bit of what was left and it's grown to all of this so this is actually the first bloom that it produced after about six months so as you see this how it looks like when it's about to bloom and these right here are just the little pods before it blooms so it's very beautiful it produces it very abundantly as you see they're just all over and i can't wait till this one grows more maturely i'm gonna put it in the ground on my farm Here we have a sugar apple and uh, I just peeled it as you see it's nice and ready. I put it in the fridge for about an hour before eating it and you know it's the most delicious we're gonna eat it right now. Mm. Very chewy. Delicious. Mm. Wow. As you see in the middle of the sugar apple, it's very creamy. Right here is also chewy. The consistency of this sugar apple is great. Great seed to meat ratio. Very chewy and very sweet too. I, I love this sugar apple. Very good. Now sugar apple is probably one of my favorite fruits in the world just because it has so much benefit. So if you didn't know, actually if you eat sugar apple, it's known for being one of the best skin improvers in the world, better than any liquid foundation on the market. And it's true, you know, if you eat enough of this stuff, your skin will literally just glow. Mm. This stuff is delicious. And it has a bunch of other benefits too. Huh? That's just the only one I can think of. Mm. So good. So when it comes to trimming a papaya or maintaining papaya, uh, leaves such as this, what I like to do is just tip them from right here. And what this does is it actually prevents uh, critters or animals, insects from getting into the wound of, the, of this because sometimes people would just like to cut this all off. And this is actually kind of a protection if you cut it like this. And or like, yeah, just like that is needed. So I'm gonna go around and just, you know, trim the papaya leaves that are kind of yellow. I just see these papayas are growing really fast. You know, I kind of lost track how fast they're growing. And, uh, you know, the base is actually getting really thick too. So I have to trim this. This is lemongrass. I have to trim this lemongrass because it's getting too thick. But the stalks on this lemongrass are really starting to look really nice. So actually doing maintenance on my fruit trees is actually one of my favorite things to do. You know, just trimming things with my clippers. I don't know, there's just like a feeling of manicuring something that feels really good. And especially something that can like produce fruit. It's really cool. So yeah, these are good. Thank you. This is something really interesting. These are baby figs actually. So I really like how the figs form. And really, you know, when they're babies, they're just kind of a very cool fruit. A lot of my figs in October are actually starting to produce. This is another fig vine or fig branch. It's just it's very loaded. Look at all those tiny circles are going to be figs. I just really like how they form because I believe they have a flower, but the flower is like not even, you know, like a typical flower. So it's just like a circle that just grows into a fig. And you don't really have to do much. So sometimes sugar apple gets aphids. Now I don't know if you guys see, but there's little ants actually on the sugar apple. Let's zoom in. So if you see, you see all those little ants right there at the top. Uh, they're actually over these aphids. Now they're freaking out because I'm obviously I'm here. But uh, yeah, those ants are just gonna be farming aphids. Let's see if we can find any out here. So this is actually how a sugar apple looks like if it's pretty abused by aphids and as you see right there just at the base of the sugar apple they are farming these little white things that are sucking the juice juices out of the sugar apple the same juices that make it sweet they're taking 
hit. So it's important that you want to hose these off every once in a while because, you know, to protect the sugar apple. Look at this sugar apple. I think it's about one month old. And I really like how this one turned out because it looks like a heart. This one will be about a few months out till, till harvest time. Maybe it will be ready in December, but I'm not sure to be honest. So I really like how it turned out. You know, to be honest, I think I might have hand pollinated this one actually, because there's at one point where I just uh, pollinated a few, and this one looks more, much more uniform than compared to this one that I just showed you. And yeah, you could tell this one's kind of a little uglier, right? But it's still, this one will still be good. Look at that. Now there are still sugar apple flowers here too. And this one might have even been pollinated by nature because usually at this point they usually at this stage they fall off, but I can tell it's still pretty attached pretty hard. So we will keep an eye on that one. But look right here we actually found a flower that's actually open. Oof, it smells like uh, bananas. So Wow, so this is actually a male flower. As you see the pollen right there, if we tap it lightly, the pollen will actually come out. So yeah, when it's open like that, it's a male. And you can see the pollen right there inside. Oh, and I, it smells like a banana liquor. So these, these flowers have a really like banana, a banana smell to them. And this is another sugar apple that I didn't pollinate myself, but looks really good right now. So. And the texture is very hard. That's how they feel when they're in this stage. No. No. Thank you guys so much for watching episode 18 of the Tropical Fruit Gardening TV series. Let me know if you want to see a certain fruit tree or a certain fruit. I said that last episode, but I really want to record what you guys want to see. So just let me know. This Sunday too, I have a flea market and I'm going to be bringing a lot of plants. So I can't wait to actually get that on film. I love flea markets. I love setting up, you know, a little plant shop. So we'll see, you know, what we'll be selling. I can't wait to show you guys how that goes. I uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye now.